Selective breeding allows you to tease apart the relative influence of genetic inheritance and environment on the development of behavior, but you really can't do that with humans. For one thing, it takes too long to have multiple generations, and for another, more important reason, it would be illegal to conduct an experiment of this type with humans. So how do we go about teasing apart the relative influence of genetic inheritance and environment on the development of behavior in humans? One way to do this is to use twin studies. Before we start talking about procedures in twin studies, I need to make sure that you have a full understanding of twins. There are two types of twins. There are identical twins and there are fraternal twins. Identical twins are referred to as monozygotic. Mono means one, and so these twins come from a single zygote or fertilized egg. So they share 100% of the same genetic material. They're identical. On the other hand, dizygotic twins or fraternal twins, di means two, so here we have twins coming from two different fertilized eggs, share the same amount of genetic material as any other pair of siblings, which is about 50%. One type of twin study is referred to as an adoption study. And here, researchers look around the world for monozygotic or identical twins who were raised in different homes. For naturally occurring reasons, they were separated at birth and raised in different environments. If you compare these twins, they have the same genetic material, but different environments, you can learn something about the relative influence of genetic inheritance and environment on the development of behavior. So researchers have done this. They've looked at the development of intelligence, the development of various psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, and they have discovered that genetic inheritance plays a role in both intelligence and various psychiatric disorders. I want you to understand the logic of this. If you have a group of monozygotic twins whose families separated them at birth and raised the children in different environments. And you find that if one of a pair of co-twins tends to develop symptoms of schizophrenia and the other one does as well, and this occurs for a group of co-twins, then you can conclude that there's a strong genetic component in the development of schizophrenia. But these are not perfect studies. In fact, no experiment, no research study is ever without at least some flaws, although they add to our body of knowledge. But this particular type of study does have some problems. These are children who are adopted at birth, and one might suggest that children who are adopted are not necessarily representative of the larger population that's of interest to us. I am in no way criticizing or being mean about adoption. I have a family member who was adopted. But if you think about it logically, children who are adopted are generally going to be placed in families where the parents are older. Quite often adoption occurs because individuals try to have children and are unable to do so. Time passes and so these parents may be somewhat older than other parents in the population. It's also quite often the very attractive, by whatever cultural standards, the very attractive children who are adopted early. So again, these children may not be representative of the larger population. Finally, it costs a great deal of money to adopt a child, and so these children may be growing up in fairly well-to-do households, not necessarily representative of the larger population of children. You may recall the term external validity, well, we need to question it here. It does not mean that these studies are useless. It just means that we view them with a little bit of skepticism. Another type of twin study that we might conduct involves comparing concordance rates for co-twins. This is easier to do because there are not that many pairs of twins that have been separated at birth and raised in different families. When a researcher wants to conduct the first type of study, they have to look all over the world to find enough co-twins in this situation. It's easier to conduct the second type of twin study. Here, we're comparing concordance rates for co-twins. Essentially, if we were looking at the development of schizophrenia, we might look at whether or not monozygotic or identical twins share symptoms of schizophrenia and is that tendency greater than for dizygotic twins or fraternal twins to share symptoms of schizophrenia. If you find that monozygotic twins tend to share symptoms of schizophrenia more often than dizygotic or fraternal twins, then you can conclude that there's a strong genetic component in the development of schizophrenia. There are some potential confounds with this type of twin study as well. 
if you think about it, monozygotic twins look alike, while dizygotic twins do not necessarily look alike. And so the environment is more similar for monozygotic twins than for dizygotic twins. We know through social psychology that people tend to react to others based on appearance. And if one's appearance is similar to another person's, then perhaps one's environment is similar to that person's. Before we finish talking about twins, let me ask you this question. Suppose a pair of twins is composed of one male and one female twin. Are they monozygotic or dizygotic? And if you answered dizygotic or fraternal, you're correct.